yeah, there's sometimes I, it's like I can see how the there is just this resistance, you know, that I get reflected back to me um, of, of, of following or the direction. Like sometimes the reflection comes back as just like, uh, like someone's being put out because they're being asked to do something. Or um, I've even heard this, uh, Carrie asked me to do something last night and I did it, but I was really people pleasing her. Yeah, it's so, or, you know, um, I've heard, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Yeah, so it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at these things in my mind, it's just like, hey, this is definitely for me to wash this own, my own resistance away, and, and, uh, and I want to take the opportunity to do this. No, you know, and sometimes I have reactions to some of these things, and it's just like, this is what I'm healing right now. But yeah, I mean, I have to watch kind of like this apprehension in my mind of approaching people with certain things. Like, I'm afraid of getting a reaction or whatever, you know, and for me, you know, this kind of like a fear of conflict is there. Um, so that's the starting point for my question. Okay, that's good. That, we, that's very subtle again, but we can, there's so much there to get at really some deep, deep stuff. Um, when we have guidelines like uh, no people pleasing, no private thoughts, I, uh, Christian was reminding me today that once time I said, if you could totally get into practicing those two guidelines, you, you, you wouldn't even need the course. <laughs> if you could fully practice no people pleasing and no private thoughts, the unconscious mind would be up and out faster than you could even imagine. And yet people pleasing is, is kind of now become a cliche that, that even when you show up for mind training and you need a lot of mind training, a whole lot of mind training, and there are those there that are there to join with you and offer projects and instructions just designed to do that mind training that people it will be like, well, I don't want to people please Carrie, or I don't want to people please David and the messengers and everything. And that's a common ego defense against the very mind training <laughs> that is needed. When the mind's deceived and the mind's asleep, it is more than addicted to people pleasing. It is a way of life for the deceived mind. In fact, the ego made up the whole cosmos. It literally peopled the world. Jesus uses that phrase. You peopled the world, meaning the ego peopled the world. God didn't create the people. God is no respecter of persons, the Bible says. God is pure spirit. God doesn't even know about this world. God has nothing to do with the people. Personalities, persona, mask. God is not a creator of masks. In God, all things are known. Everything is revealed openly. There's no secrets. There's no hiding. There's no mask. There's no persons. There's no personalities. This world is completely unlike the Kingdom of Heaven. There's nothing a part of this world that has anything to do with the Kingdom of Heaven. Nothing. Even the unified field that the quantum physicists talk about where it's all connected and all energy, the happy dream, the forgiven world, Jesus tells us that too is an illusion. That's still part of the veil has nothing to do with God at all. God has nothing to do with any of it. So be passers-by, as it says in the Gospel of Thomas, means, yeah, we have to forgive and release everything about this world to know God. God knows not form, the Course teaches. So if you're going to know God and God knows not form, put those together. You need revelation to know God. Now. What you're describing is, is that's the uneasiness, the sense of conflict there. Because when you are put in a, what is called a leadership position, that's a, just a temporary symbol that the Holy Spirit will use to speak through and to lead through and guide through, only that you can, can let the Spirit do it through you. And the ego is always a little frightened of, of that because it's being undone through that process. Uh, even the I need do nothing section of the course, you know, he says just have complete loyalty and do this just one thing for me and say and mean I need do nothing as a form of allegiance. That's so deep. It's like what? People, people look at that and they go, what's he talking about? I need do nothing. What the whole course is about doing lessons and it can't, what's he talking about? 
He even says, from this place of stillness, you'll be led on many busy doings. So he's showing you that there's going to be lots of being done through before you have this experience that I need to do nothing. I, 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 I don't have any shoulds or ought tos and have tos left. So you're just giving way to a process of like cleansing your mind, washing your mind, of being used by the Holy Spirit. And in the state of, of unified awareness, there's no sense of doing or even being done through at that point. That's, that all vanishes. There's no sense that doing has no meaning in the unified field. Nothing's done in the unified field. It's just pure unified awareness and energy. And that's what you're being lifted up and taken to. And these are just mechanisms, you know, where like we have a lot of people who come here and they really get it that the first step is trust and follow. And they, even though they may have ego resistance to trust and follow, there's something in their mind that knows, wow, this is the first step in my escape from hell, <laughs> my perception of the world. And then as they get into trust and follow, trust and follow, there comes a certain point where the spirit will say, very good, you've, you're doing really well with that one. Now we're going to not kick it up a notch. Now I'll see if you can lead and follow. Because if you identify personally with the leader role, and you think you yourself are leading, oh, it's going to be a rough, <laughs> a rough ride. But if you're being led, if you're leading through listening, you know, like it says in the Course, the messenger is just the one who, who delivers the message. But the messages are for the messenger. You know, he's giving beautiful metaphors in the Course. That really, it's all for your mind. It's not really teacher, student, leader, follower. It's just all mechanisms. But let's say you come in and you go, trust, follow, trust, follow, trust, follow. And then you reach a certain point and then you're, you're given another instruction. Now, follow, lead, follow, lead, follow, lead, follow, lead. If ultimately, the only way you will find peace in either of those is to let go of, of control. Of, of thinking that you, that you are voluntarily in charge of the following or the leading. Because it's only the ego, the personality self, that believes that it's somehow in charge of something. And then at some point, you start to realize what Jesus says, miracles are involuntary. Oh my gosh. Involuntary. Oh my gosh. That is going to open up the gateway to peace of mind because that sense of control, you know, miracles, he says, should not be under conscious control. You know, there is one, Jesus says, I'm in the charge of the planet of the atonement. I inspire miracles. I can do them through you. But he doesn't ever say that you personally are in charge of miracles, or that you can even direct and choose where they should be bestowed. That was one of my biggest lessons when I started to get into all the miracles. I started to think, my mother really needs a miracle. And, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> was I in for <laughs> a difficult time with that one. In fact, I even went to her and would just be sharing the ideas, and she said at one point, you need to find other people to share these ideas with. And, and Jesus said, did you hear that? That was me speaking through mom. That was exactly it. I had to open up my parameters and, and let Jesus, the Holy Spirit, tell me where to bestow the miracles. That was another step in, I will step back and let him lead the way. That was just another step in humble following of letting go of thinking that I knew anything about who needed what. Miracles are involuntary and should not be under conscious control. You see, that's going to take a lot of mind training to experience that state of mind. And when people are coming in from a state of deception, 
and they say things like, well, I don't want to people please carry. Well, the whole point of coming here is because they're just draped in people pleasing. <laughs> As if they could tell when they're doing it and when they're not doing it. It's such a, a deep thing that they're people pleasing almost all the time. And I don't hesitate to say that. It's so deeply ingrained. They've, they've believed in this mask and they're so shaky about this mask that they, they really think it's important to be liked and to, to be liked by other people and know the right people and all those things that Jesus talks about in Lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. Being liked, knowing the right people. The, that, he's, he doesn't call it people pleasing, but, but the sleeping mind is draped in that. It's, it's just a, a way of life for that. And it doesn't even suspect that it's absolute craziness and nonsense. It actually thinks that it's, it's doing real helpful things when it's just people pleasing, people pleasing, and people pleasing, and more people pleasing. And it needs to be gently shaken out, usually through contrast experiences. So this I know mind that's just so locked into people pleasing with everything and everyone needs to have a few little, a little, few little charges and jolts to start to realize how pervasive is the problem. So that's why I started out last night and said that when I had a group of students back in the, in the early 1990s, we would just come together and I would just say, does anybody think they know something? And we would go immediately into the I know mind and, and start to let the spirit softly show us that we didn't. We didn't know anything. And you, you know, your question is beautiful because it's very, very subtle. And, and the only reason you're reacting, you know, and there's this sense of, of like conflict might be there, is because it's still voluntary and, and it hasn't become, it hasn't crossed the threshold of becoming more and more involuntary. You won't feel any of that when miracles are involuntary because there's, there's no person that's doing them. You know, they're just totally, it's all pure inspiration. So I just feel really honored that you've just given yourself to, to come over and given yourself over to this. And it's not going to be comfortable. A lot of times there'll be these hints of conflict and these rumblings on the inside as the unconscious mind is starting to come up into awareness. But, you know, you're really advancing, or you might say it's, it's an accelerated undoing of that. And, and I have to tell you, living a life with no people-pleasing, zero people-pleasing, is absolutely delightful. It's peaceful, it's harmonious, it's restful. It's got all the strength and power and the glory of the universe behind it. It's a sense of invulnerability, a sense of fearlessness. You don't hesitate. You don't have a moment of doubt. You let your yea be yea, you let your nay be nay. It's also gentle. It's, it's got all the might and glory and power of the universe, and it's, it's gentle, too. Isn't that great? Meekness and strength are the same, Jesus taught us. And, and you know it's absolutely true, but there's not a hesitation. Maybe, probably, there's none of those words that are kind of, you know, in the gray zone. It's not gray at all. You know, it's, it's pure light. And is it worth it? It is. It's worth every bit of mind training. It's worth every bit of meditation. It's worth every bit of darkness that seems to come up in, in your face. It's worth it all because the reward is so great. Peace of mind is no small reward and it's worth going for with all your heart, you know. And, and that's what I feel. I feel with a lot of those here in the room, this, this is a life's calling. The, the plan B's have been let go of. Whatever they were, whatever they were, they've, they've been long ago dropped. Some, for some of you, months or years ago. And, you know, you're just not in that place like Cypher in the Matrix. I just, I don't hear that. I don't hear you going around, why, oh why, didn't I take the blue pill? You know, 
you know, sometimes you still say this steak is juicy. <laughs> my my eyes, my my taste buds are telling me <laughs> that this. But but there's, that doesn't last for long. You know, you're, you're back to okay. I, I just want a miracle. <laughs> That's really what I want here. I want more than a temporary satisfaction. I want something that's on my way to the everlasting. And and really that's why we're here. We're tucked away, you know, out in the middle of a, a remote canyon, just having these subtle questions that are coming, you know, from you and KJ and Ben, because you're you want that clarity. You're you're grasping for that clarity. You know, you want that peace. You don't want that hesitation. You don't want to have that little bit of like, oh, here comes, oh, that could be a conflict. Do I have to tell them? You know, you don't, it's not you personally who delivers the message. I know Suzanne's been going through a lot of that too, where she just tunes in and she's just wanting to just, just deliver the message. <laughs> you know, it takes everything there. Then snip, snip, snip. What are the outcomes of the message? You think Jesus really cares about form outcome, the same one that's teaching you nothing I see means anything could care less what the outcome looks like. It's, it's the willingness to stand and deliver. You know, that's what purifies us. And that's what, like I mentioned hospice last night, you know, when I was young I would not be going around walking into rooms with dying people and telling them what a great job they did, how innocent they were. That was the Holy Spirit. That was not David going into hospital rooms with dying people. I mean, some of them would be incoherent, or they'd be in a coma, or whatever. Some of them would come right out of a coma for my mind to hear what I had to say. They would come right up to attention in their bed. Even my biological father, when he was had gone off into a coma in the emergency room and my mother and my sister invited me and said, come with us David and he's all hooked up to the tubes and he's not coherent anymore and everything and I was just briefly there because I was off on my next teaching mission to Florida not even to be there for the funeral not be there for the burial or anything I walked into that emergency room and zoom, out he came right out of the coma, Dave what, what are you, where are you going to next? He said, Florida. He said, good, good. He just came right out of the coma. You know, was I there at the funeral to pay my respects? No, I don't believe in that. Let the dead bury the dead. I was there in our eternal moment of life. He came right out of the coma for me because we had, had a, a, a meaningful exchange to make. And I knew I wouldn't be around for the funeral. I knew the family would have to go through their grieving and all their stuff. And I've already done that. I transcended that grief and the need for paying respects to the dead and everything. I had risen in the Christ, in the life. And we had a beautiful exchange. And as Mary Jo and Evelyn were there like, whoa. You know, it was <laughs> pretty powerful. But, but that was not uncommon for me. I had a lot of miracles like that, like letting my grandmother speak through me at her own funeral. You know, it's, it's nice when you can channel and tell the crowd at the funeral just what you want to tell them with no people pleasing. So I just let her use my body, so to speak. And they felt it and they cried. And they, they just had so much love. They could feel, they said, I could, we could feel her. And I said, she's like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> you got it. Because it's life is not of the body and you know once you get into this state of mind you know that's the whole point of all of this but you're not going to have doubt anymore you don't you're not going to have hesitation you're not going to have concern you're not going to be worried I can't even remember the last time when I worried it's been so long ago I can't even I can't even reach into the recesses of my mind it's like it's gone it's nice not to worry. It really is. It's, you talk about how helpful that is to your state of mind where you don't have a worry and a concern. You know, that's, that's worth the mind training. It's worth every instant of mind training. 
Thank you.